So this week, Donald Trump was appearing at a Make America Great Again rally, and perhaps like me, you're wondering why he's still holding these rallies. Like, wasn't the point to garner support so that he could be elected president of the US? Hasn't the point... Who carries on having rallies after they've been elected? And the answer to that question, if you're wondering, is Hitler. And I know Godwin's Law, people are like, don't compare people to the Nazis because you, just because they disagree with you politically. But the thing is, I can't compare him to anybody else because nobody else does this. I can't compare him to Angela Merkel because she doesn't think she's a member of status quo. At the rally, Trump took it upon himself to do an impersonation of Christine Blasey Ford, the woman at the centre of the sexual assault allegations against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And the thing is, whatever you think about the allegations and about the truth of the situation, impersonating someone, describing their experience of violent sexual assault, is just one of those things that you shouldn't do. You know, like impersonating someone with a disability. Now, Trump's complaint about about Ford is that she doesn't remember a lot of details about the attack, which was, of course, a very long time ago. But that's kind of weird, isn't it? Because how great is Trump's memory? Here's some things Trump has forgotten recently. Uh, number one, the lyrics to God Bless America. Number two, the lyrics to Star Spangled Banner. Number three, the fact that his wife is standing next to him. But I just want to thank everybody, the first responders, uh, on behalf of myself, our vice president, Melania, really wanted to be with us. She's really, it's really touched her heart what's gone on. Number four, the thing he's just said. Senate Majority Whip John Cornyn. John, thank you. Great job. House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. Again, Steve, thank you. House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Kevin, Chair John Thune and House Conference Chair Kathy McMorris Rogers. Did they forget your name, John? I don't know. It's, what's going on here? John Cornyn, everybody knows. They didn't put his name up, but that's okay. That's the first time that's ever happened. That will, hey, John, that'll never happen again. <laughs> Number five, which country he's just launched 59 missiles at? So what happens is I said, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you headed to Syria. Yes, heading toward Syria. And finally, number six, he genuinely forgot during a lawsuit filed against Trump University during the presidential campaign, he was questioned and he said he couldn't remember whether he had described himself as having one of the best memories in the world. Like, it's so meta, I couldn't write this stuff. Trump went on to say that as a result of Ford's allegations, a man's life is in tatters. And I can't help thinking that the bar you've set for the phrase life in tatters is a little bit on the high side if having your appointment to a lifetime position as a Supreme Court Justice in the United States of America delayed by at most a few weeks while some serious allegations against you are investigated constitutes your life in tatters. That's kind of disrespectful, isn't it, to people who have been diagnosed with a serious medical illness or seen their home washed away in a natural disaster or been a victim of violent sexual assault and then been brave enough to speak out about it but been disbelieved and ridiculed publicly. And the truth is that that kind of thing happens to women in the US and all around the world in their thousands on a daily basis. And for some of them, it's even worse. Some of them end up pregnant as a result of the sexual violence and imagine how much your life would be left in tatters 
if you were then forced to continue that pregnancy and raise that child because Roe versus Wade had been overturned by a hardline Catholic who had been appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States of America despite the allegations of sexual violence against him. That would seem pretty serious. Um, Trump went on to describe Brett Kavanaugh's daughters as beautiful. Somebody in the Trump administration needs to have a word with the man and say, listen, mate, there are times when you really shouldn't describe someone's daughters as beautiful. And as far as I can tell, they're these. Uh, number one, when they're children. Number two, when their dad is under investigation for a serious violent sexual assault. Uh, number three, when you're Donald Trump, because frankly, everything you say comes across as creepy. And since I've got your attention, Don, let's just chuck in number four, when it's your own daughter. Trump then complains that people accused of sexual assault in the US and around the world are guilty until proven innocent. And the thing is, on that point, he's actually right. The fact is that I'm not the only person when I hear somebody has been accused of a sexual crime like that, my assumption is that they're guilty. And if you want that to change, what we need to do is to improve the conviction rate because right now, there is basically nowhere around the world that has a conviction rate for rape and sexual violence that is in double figures. So you either have to accept that 90% of women are making this stuff up, or when you hear that somebody has been accused and not convicted, you still have to conclude that statistically they almost certainly did it. And I take the view that these women aren't all making it up and here's why I take that view because when you question men about these issues away from the courtroom it turns out that they're surprisingly open about their willingness to commit sexual violence. A piece of research from the University of North Dakota said that 31.7% of men said they would force a woman to have sex with them if they thought they could get away with it. And 13.6% of men in the same survey said they would rape a woman if they thought they could get away with it. Now, there's two points that need taking out of that. Firstly, forcing a woman to have sex with you is rape. It's really frightening that people out there don't understand the basic definition of it and somehow think that if they do it on a date or to somebody they're in a relationship with or in some set of special circumstances, somehow that's not rape. It is. It's rape. There's only one word for it. But Worse still, even when we look at just those who admit they would rape someone, 13.6%. That is a heck of a lot. And that's people saying they'd do it if they thought they could get away with it. And the statistics say they can get away with it. So I'm inclined to believe women on the basis of probability. If you want me to start treating people as innocent until they have been to court or until they've been found guilty, then we have to have a system that finds people guilty when they've done it. We have to have a system with a conviction rate that is better than this. It's called like up here and it's called memory and it's called other things. I have a good memory and all that stuff, like a great memory. I have a really good memory. And I have a very good memory. And I have a good memory, like a great memory. I have a great memory. And I'm blessed with a great memory. One of the great memories of all time. I, I don't remember much about that meeting. It was a very unimportant meeting, it took place a long time. Don't remember much about it.